Alright, hello guys, in this video we're going to be talking about our weekly forecast from November 3rd until November 10th. We're going to go over the precipitation forecast, temperature forecast, and our special note segment of the video. Now before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now let's get right into things. We're going to be taking this layer by layer. Like always, our precipitation forecast isn't a lot of action going on here. We're going to have a little bit of above average precipitation there up in Montana, kind of just to the east of those northern Rockies. And then also for the southeastern United States and south central United States as well, we're going to have slightly above average precipitation in these two regions. Again, once it's in that first shade, we're not really, it's not very noticeable, but on paper you will be above average. You might notice it, but probably not. We even have a second shade of green here for Oklahoma, a little bit of Texas, Kansas, and Arkansas as well. So that's going to be an area where it's going to be a bit more noticeable than the surrounding regions. So that would be uh, where we're going to see the most likely chance of having above average precipitation. Now we have slightly below average precipitation from the west coast all the way through the Rockies and into the Great Plains, the little sliver of the Great Plains that is, and even into the Great Lakes. This is where it's just going to be a little bit more dry and we won't have any big storms tracking over the area whatsoever, so not going to be a lot of action there. And even here you can see we add a second shade of brown there for the west coast, Oregon, California, a little bit of the mountains of California and into the mountains of Idaho as well. This is where we're going to be dealing with moderately below average precipitation. Uh, and it's going to be a bit more dry in those regions than the surrounding regions. Now, we're about to talk about our temperature forecast, and things are about to get super exciting as we have a giant cooldown coming, and it's going to be a big switch up from what we've seen in the past. So let's add our first layer here. You can see our first yellow or orange layer here. This is where we're expecting slightly above average temperatures. So from more, uh, Washington down through Oregon, California, and some of those four corner states, we're going to be dealing with slightly above average temperatures there, as well as in Florida. Again, not too noticeable in these regions, but it will be warmer than normal on, on paper, most likely. Now we even have a second shade of orange here for California, Nevada, Arizona, Utah, and Oregon there. This is where it's going to be a lot more noticeable. And this is just terrible news for California. You saw we were expecting dry conditions and now even warm conditions. Uh, I'm, I'm just, you know, it's, it's a terrible situation down there. And uh, everybody in the United States is thinking about you guys and has you guys in our thoughts and prayers uh, as you guys are dealing with a catastrophic event down there in California. Now let's add our first shade of below average temperatures here from the east of the Rockies all the way to the eastern United States. We have below average temperatures here. Again, I told you guys this was going to be very, very exciting stuff. And here we go. We have below average temperatures. I mean, it's just going to be so, so cold. And it gets even colder as we add some more layers. Here, this is our second layer of blue, and this is where it's going to be moderately below average. You're going to notice it in this blue, and this is taking up a big area from Montana through the Great Lakes, through some of those Great Plains, and into the northeastern United States and mid-Atlantic. All of these regions are going to be far below average. We even have a third shade of blue here from North Dakota into Minnesota and the Great Lakes. This is where it's going to be just frigid, and again, if you watched my November forecast, you would know that this actually correlates with it quite nicely here. This looks pretty, like, it, like it's doing pretty good here, okay, because this looks very similar to my temperature map on the November forecast. What we're having here is a very slow-moving, not very progressive pattern, meaning the pattern that sticks in is really going to stick in. And it's not going to be changing too much. Whereas in September, October, and August, we had a very, very progressive pattern that was just changing and moving constantly. Uh, and it was it was just all over the place. It's really slowing down now. And I mean, we could be looking at a consistent trough in the eastern United States through the whole month of November. I'm looking at the possibility for that to happen. Models see at least through the 20th that we will see a trough in the eastern United States. So, I mean, it's going to be very, very frigid for at least the first two-thirds of the month, and that's really going to push our average below average in the east. I think the November forecast, as far as temperatures are concerned, is going to verify very, very nicely. I'm very proud of how that's worked out through the first three days. I had somebody comment on that uh, video on the first day of November. Uh, you were wrong. This, this forecast isn't doing too good for November, and it was the first day of November. 
don't know what all that was about. Now, let's get into your special note segment of the video where we have very, very exciting stuff. Now, for your first special note here, you can see we're expecting that big, big cooldown for the eastern United States from the, from the Rocky Mountains through the Great Plains into the south central United States and, and the deep south there, and then the Great Lakes, New England, Mid-Atlantic, and the southeast. All of these regions are going to be experiencing this big cooldown, and it's going to be a big, big change up from what we've been experiencing recently. I mean, again, from August, there were some cooldowns in August, but then once September arrived in October, well, especially September, there was hardly any. From late August into early September, there was basically just a ton of heat everywhere in the eastern United States. October, you know, it was spotty. We had some cooldowns, but hardly any. And then now November is starting off on a very, very cold note. So complete opposite. There's going to be far and few between as far as warm-ups are concerned in the eastern United States. A lot of you that were begging for the cold will probably be begging for the warmth by the time November is said and done. I'm just putting that out there for the Great Lakes in the north central United States. Unless you just love the cold. Uh, some people don't though. Now we also have some exciting news here for our next two special notes as there's a a few winter storms we're expecting to be possible here during the next week for the eastern United States. The western United States doesn't look very active, so we're not even going to have a single special note for the western United States. It's going to be quite dry and quite warm. That's the only thing that's worth mentioning. Uh, but besides that, very, very action-free for the most part, which you guys probably are thankful that there's going to be a break from all the action because just a couple weeks ago we were dealing with a ton of action out there, and now it's switching back to the eastern United States. But you can see here from the 6th through the 8th, we're expecting a clipper system to be possible from Montana through the Great Lakes and into the New England states. Keep in mind, with these snowstorm ones, I'm not indicating where the rain and snow line is going to be because that's going to be kind of a short-term thing that we're going to have to decipher. So I'm not necessarily saying that Pennsylvania is going to get snow here. There's going to be a clipper system, and some areas will get rain, some areas will get snow. Most likely it's those southern and coastal regions that will get rain, and it's the more northern inland regions that will get snow. So that's just how these systems go. If you guys live in these regions, you know this stuff. I shouldn't have to say it, but obviously if I didn't mention anything, you guys would come back to this video and be like, oh, it didn't snow in Pennsylvania. So I just wanted to clarify that. Now for your third special note, we're expecting an even bigger winter storm here, and I accidentally left the date as the 6th through the 8th, but this one's actually going to be for the 8th and beyond. I just wanted to clarify that as well. And again, with this one, the southeast is definitely not expecting snow in Florida, but we're going to be expecting a winter storm on the very northern and inland regions of this. I'm expecting maybe Oklahoma and Missouri and a little bit of northern Arkansas to get maybe a little bit of ice or mix there. So that might be considered a winter storm there, but I'm not expecting any snowfall except for the northeastern United States here from Ohio and through interior Pennsylvania, you know, in the more inland regions, then upstate New York and maybe interior New England as well. We have seen the possibility for coastal New England to get snow and even the mid-Atlantic, but I'm thinking this one will end up shaping out to be a more northeastern interior northeast snowstorm. And that's what we originally saw with model guidance, and it's kind of switched now towards the mid-Atlantic. But I'm almost certain this one's going to end up being a northeastern winter storm with a more realistic outcome. You know, upstate New York, inland New England getting the most snow and then maybe some mixing going on. Even for areas like Boston or Providence, uh, maybe even New York City getting a little bit of their first flakes. It's really, really hard to say at this point and we're going to have to watch it very closely. Again, in my last video where I mentioned this one. I did also mention that I think I'm going to be making a few videos for this storm as we get closer. Obviously, we're only at the 3rd, and that storm is expected for around the 8th. So, we have a lot of time, and I'm not going to be making any videos on it probably for the next couple of days. That clipper system is going to get a video more soon than the 8th system, but stay tuned for the 8th system because I think it is sticking around because we've seen it. We've seen model guidance suggesting it for quite a while now, so I'm expecting that it is going to be an actual storm that we will see verify. So we will have to keep you guys updated on that one, which I've been getting so many messages about it. People are like, hey, make a video about this storm, please. I heard, that, you know, all sorts of different states. I've heard Maryland's going to get snow. I've heard Pennsylvania's going to get snow. I've heard New Hampshire's going to get snow. That's a lot more realistic, by the way. Uh, right now, the GFS is showing North Carolina and Virginia getting snow. I don't think that's going to happen whatsoever, and we do see the GFS do stuff like that a lot, which is not accurate. 
but we'll see. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this weekly forecast. Be sure to share this with friends and family, as always, if you did enjoy the video or if you think they'll find it interesting or useful. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.